Welcome to another edition of Credit Matters TV. Today I'm joined by Arturo Sanchez to talk about the publication of Standard & Poor's Additional Loss Absorbing Capacity, or ALA criteria, and its potential impact on Latin American banks. Arturo, what does ALA criteria stand for? Well, Jose, thanks for having me. We're addressing regulatory policy developments in different jurisdictions to implement bailing regulatory mechanisms to improve the capacity of a bank to survive extreme stresses without necessarily relying on government bailouts by a recapitalization on the back of the write-down or conversion into common equity of various obligations. Our criteria also address ALAC as a form of potential external support that can be incorporated in bank credit ratings. And in this regard, the potential for substituting government support into the ratings in those jurisdictions that are evolving to bail-in resolution regimes. So then, where does ALAC criteria apply? Our ALAC criteria apply to all banks rated globally. However, the initial rating implications of the ALA criteria will be very limited, since most jurisdictions have not implemented valid policies or because the respective governments are still expected to provide extraordinary support to systemically important banks in certain circumstances. Will ALA criteria affect ratings in Latin American banks? Uh, no for the time being. In the case of Latin America, we view 9 out of 14 banking systems as supportive, this is that we believe the government in those countries would provide extraordinary support to high and moderate systemically important banks. There are two countries in the region that are considering to adopt bailing regimes, but its time frame is still uncertain, and given their track record, we currently assess them as supportive. We still consider that in the great majority of countries in Latin America, the dominant view is that policymakers should keep the ability to bail out senior creditors. You mentioned that ALAC could substitute government support into our ratings, but why doesn't ALAC is additive to the government support uplift? Well, because we consider the benefits of ALAC and government support to be mutually exclusive, except in certain circumstances. This is consistent with the way we treat the potential for extraordinary group support and government support in our criteria. That is, that we take the higher of the two outcomes rather than aggregating them. Thank you, Arturo. See you next time on another edition of Credit Matters TV.